Farkas. The early post office on the other. And so the sea, the waves found in the rocks, they made the old octagonal bastion. I heard the sound. The black water stung the nose. I smelt the sea. A thousand miles away from the motherland, I felt the festive mood at the bend of the road of people at the open market of fish. Then I recall the bees, the time by gone, or oh, the quiet living, the easiness of the life that was centuries ago, in the innocent yacht for days, centuries ago, before singers had cast their stones. <coughs> well, people call me dear, I have to we find ourselves, our bodies, implicated in the prosecution of the border crosses. Even though, in truth, one way or another, we are all border crosses. She asked me what people call me here. I hesitate. I wonder if Mum and Barbara ever talked about how histories had shaped their bodies, how empire had brought them together and taken them to London, Somalia, and now Australia. Did they talk of culture and of language and of what to pass on to their children? When they came to the middle place, did remnants of other homes still linger, trailing behind them, gathering around their bodies, a constant reminder of the consequence of choice. Did this smother their love? Does love and ja'al, ash, feel and taste different? Does it hurt the same when it eventually falls away? I'm about to take my first step. Here within the dimly lit hall, I close my eyes and begin to move. Faint outlines of body stretch and bend silently around me in this solidarity of discovery. I lift up my right foot and pivot my left, drawing my hands slowly upwards. I slowly allow them to fall over my face and then move gently across the surface of my body. In this space, my attention moves through thought, desire, and action without censorship. Here, among silhouettes of flesh, I dance on the borderlands. I dance around and through stories that have collected onto my body. I greet histories of oppression and victory with the swirl of the neck and the flick of my hips. I chart, chart their love, your loss, and my suffering in these movements. Although violent and full of love, my home is here on the borderlands. But then I let it all go. She asked me what people call me here. I hesitate. The truth was here. I
Oh, he who nurtures tribalism, stupidity is a disease. The day before yesterday's tribalism was set up by colonialism. Well, yesterday the go-getter and the parliamentarians were its promoters, and today it's the middlemans and the new rich profiteers. It's like a hidden trap they set to mislead people. No refuge is offered by tribalism. It is the source of starvation. It's the mark of backwardness. It's an open sore in people's minds. We arrived in the airport of Pagesi in the morning. During the flight from Dubai, I sat next to a woman called Hodan. Hodan was about the same age as me. She was a Somali lander who had grown up in London and was taking flight to Hargeza to accompany her aged Ayo back to London. We talked about our lives and Hodan asked if this was my first time to Somaliland. I said yes. Hearing this prompted Hodan to reminisce about what she had about when she had made her journey back. I was so scared, I didn't know what it would be like. How are you feeling? Iterations of this question had been asked to me incessantly in the lead up of my travels. And each time it was asked, it was a stark reminder of the place, Somalia and Somaliland, having the minds of many people. But when this question came from Hodan, I understood what she meant. For although we had grown up as Somali with a multi-dimensional understanding of Somalia, 
not bound to the stereotypes of piracy, famine, war, and a blanket perception of danger. Our emotions as first time travelers were still bound up in this problematic and limited representation. Yet as the plane descended into Hargeza, I responded to Hodan, excited, irrespective of how Somalia and Somaliland was distortedly presented, I was going home. Mm -hmm. Distances of nostalgia Hammer Mogadishu I saw in a picture the panoramic of the old port 